Hi folks. Hey, my name is Chris McClure and I'm going to be your instructor this semester for Math 157 Section WW7 Statistics here at Des Moines Area Community College. I wanted to spend a few minutes with you, uh, go through a few things to help you get going with this course. To start off with uh, is the um, syllabus. Now, you should have received this syllabus in an email that I've sent out a couple of times already, once last week and again this week. And um, so let's go ahead and go through this. Um, so uh, I'm based in Ankeny, which is the flagship uh, campus of the Des Moines Area Community College. Uh, this is a Statistics Math 157 class, Section WW7. Uh, CRN, which is the common uh, course reference number, 31689. So if you need to do any adding, dropping, transferring, or whatever, uh, then if you need to reference this course, this is the five-digit CRN number. This is my name, Christopher R. McClure. My email address, crmcclure at dmac.edu. Uh, I'm going to stop right here and make an aside that says that any email communications I need to do with you, I'm going to send them to your DMAC email unless you email me specifically using your some other email besides your DMAC email. But when I go to send you an email, if I don't have an email already established for you uh, that I, you know, I'm not already aware of, it's going to go to your DMAC email. So make sure that you're checking your DMAC email on a regular basis. When I send uh, emails out to the course, uh, to the entire class, uh, it's going to go to your DMAC email. Um, so I would suggest that you get your smart device, your uh, cell phone, your smartphone, and have your smartphones track your DMAC emails. All right, here's my office telephone number right here, 515-964-6543. If I don't pick up, then leave a voicemail for me. Uh, I'm located in Building 4, Room 10B on the Ankeny campus. That's my office. Uh, right down here is my established office hours. Uh, instead of a website, I use Blackboard to, to keep some information on there. It's not very uh, exciting. It doesn't have a whole lot of stuff because we use my math lab slash my stat lab for a lot of what we do in this course as well, okay? Uh, moving on down here, this, uh, of course, is uh, summer 2015. I created this er earlier this semester. Uh, we are starting this course officially on the 27th of May, and this course ends earlier than most of the other summer uh, courses. This course ends on July 22nd, so we have to have everything done for the course on or before July 22nd, which is, that's, this is an eight-week course. So you'll see that this is pretty fast pace. Uh, right down here, you'll see our catalog description for this course. I'll let you read that on your own. Uh, in, your, in order for you to be here in this course, you needed to have met some sort of uh, prerequisite you needed to score uh, at least a 30% on the Alex, which is our placement test. Or you needed to have successfully completed math uh, 064, which is uh, an algebra slash uh, college prep course. Okay. One or the other or possibly both. Course competencies which are basically a list of all the things that you need to be able to do by the end of the semester. I'll go all the way down here. It's just kind of a laundry list of everything that you should know how to do by the end of the semester. All right. Down here, here's a course overview. Again, this is reading on your own right down here to give you some motivation as to why you should study statistics besides just being told that you have to uh, take statistics in order for you to satisfy your program requirements. It's actually a really fascinating field, uh, which um, 
allows you to uh, make a decision based on incomplete data. Okay, here's some information on study tips, folks. Let me just tell you right now, this is a fast-paced course. It is uh, online. So you have to be in the habit of doing a little bit of work every day. Not just a little, but a couple hours every day. So uh, stay on top of this material because if you let even a few days pass, then you're going to be behind the curve. All right. There's a lot of resources out there, including Academic Achievement Center on any of the DMAC campuses. Uh, I'm always available through office hours, and I'll show you my, well, actually, I showed you uh, above earlier what my office hours are. So uh, I'm available for virtual office hours, and I'll just say that in quotation marks because uh, in the few years that I've been teaching, Uh, excuse me, hold on. Got to say okay there. If you do want to talk with me using virtual office hours, um, those are going to be available using Skype. So if you do want to get in touch with me virtually using the internet, uh, I can Skype with you. Uh, just send me an email or give me a phone call and I'll give you my Skype uh account number excuse me account name and we can uh, exchange those and we can get in contact with skype otherwise you can send me questions by email and i could either record a little video for you or uh, um, i could use my tablet to write up something to help you uh, how this course fits into the uh, curriculum here is that this course uh, is one of many uh, math courses that you could take to satisfy an associate's degree. You uh, also might have a, a major either here at the community college or for a bachelor's degree that requires for you to have a statistics course. So chances are this course uh, satisfies that. Uh, if you're not sure, then talk with an advisor, okay? Now, regarding the textbook. Uh, I wish I was recording this video from the office, but I, uh, I'm here at my house and I don't have the textbook with me. Uh, but there is a textbook that we um, have been using for many years. It's a custom edition that we sell in our bookstore uh, based on Mario Triola's uh, textbook called Elementary Statistics Using Excel. It's a custom edition. Um, otherwise, uh, if you click on this link, let's go ahead and click on this link and see what happens. I'm going to just stop it right there. Open link in new tab. Sorry, I might have screwed that up. My internet is very slow tonight, so we'll see. Uh, when that comes up, I'll, I'll go back to that tab and, and see what it loads up, but... I think that I had um, given you a link. It, it, yeah, here, here's what you could get if you wanted to get a book off the internet or from somewhere else. This custom edition that we're using, which has a brown cover, is based on the material in this textbook. This textbook just has more uh, chapters than we use in our course. So that's why we uh, have the custom edition. But uh, again, if you could find a good deal, like for a good used book for one of these guys here, then by all means get it if you want. But uh, keep in mind though that you'll also need uh, uh, access to my stat lab, which is the online homework. And our custom edition at the bookstore comes uh, shrink wrapped with the access code for my stat lab. Whereas if you buy your textbook somewhere else, new or used, it may or may not come with the, the e-text. So make sure. This one says it does come with an access card. But not all of them do. So if you do buy a textbook that does not come with an access code to my stat lab, then uh, you'll need to get access yourself by purchasing the code which cost about $70, so be prepared for that. 
Um, if you don't really care about having a physical hard copy textbook, then you could purchase access to my stat lab only and have access to the e-textbook. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. Uh, in addition to the textbook, you're going to want some other stuff, including, you know, pencils and pens and, you know, binder, graph paper, ruler slash straight edge, some sort of calculator, preferably a graphing calculator, uh, lots of scratch paper, diligence, persistence, patience, and so on. Good time management is super important, too. Okay. Now, you know, as you could probably tell, I'm using a, uh, a template for my syllabus that applies to both uh, online and in-class, or excuse me, face-to-face -face classes. So uh, for attendance, well, I'm not going to be keeping attendance, but if I really want to know if a student is uh, applying him or herself, in meeting the requirements for the course, I could always go into my stat lab and or Blackboard and find how much um, uh, access that they had uh, gotten to the uh, either one of those platforms. I probably won't do it unless it becomes an issue with the student not passing the course, though, by the way. But, folks, I'm just going to tell you right now, I've this is my third summer teaching Math 157. And my experience is that uh, students who are not actively engaged in this course five or more times per week are probably not going to pass this course. Okay, just letting you know. Okay, now how I determine the final grade is based on homework, which is one quarter of the grade. Uh, quizzes, which are also on my stat lab, uh, which is one quarter of the grade. Midterm exam. There's going to be one, and uh, I'll talk about that in a few minutes. That's one-fourth of your grade, and the final, the final exam is also one-fourth of your grade. So it's a real easy grading scheme. And, of course, I have the normal uh, sliding scale for assigning uh, your letter grades with the pluses and the minus. Okay. Uh, folks, even though the course ends... On July 22nd, I cannot guarantee that I'll have your final grades posted any earlier than Friday, August 7th, because I have other courses that I'm teaching as well. I, I will try to get everything graded well before then, but I, the best I could promise, though, for sure, is Friday, August 7th, 2015, is when I will have everything turned in for you. Uh, again, for office hours, I do have physical office hours in which I'm actually in my office. But again, if you want to um, Skype with me or have some sort of other video conferencing uh, meeting with me, uh, just let me know. We'll figure something out, okay? Because I realize that a lot of you are not necessarily here in the central Iowa area. Um, I, I've alluded to this a couple times already. Uh, the sort of homework that you're going to do for this course is going to be online using my stat lab, which is a Pearson product. Uh, you need to somehow get access to it. Uh, I see already that there's nine of you who have already gotten enrolled in it, and that's really a good thing. You need it to um, uh, get uh, an access code or you need to purchase it separately. Uh, we'll go there in a few minutes, okay? Uh, quizzes are, are also on my stat lab. Uh, now, the midterm exam and the final exam are going to be proctored. That basically means that you need to find a place and a per and or a person to do your proctoring for you um now if you live within about a 50 mile radius of any of our dmac campuses then you really should be using the testing center at that dmac campus now i don't really care which one you just need to tell me which dmac campus that you're going to use and then you'll use the testing center at that campus but if you live well outside 50 miles of any 
and all the DMAC campuses, then you need to find a library or some other suitable location. Now, I've emailed out this uh, proctor form here. Here's a copy of it right here. Um, we, we have some pretty strict guidelines as to uh, what is acceptable and not acceptable for a location and a person to uh, do proctoring. Uh, so uh, here's the front page of the proctoring form. Here, here are some things that the proctors must observe. They must be 21, must have a working business email. Uh, you know, not none of these personal sort of emails like you see there. Must be given at a place of business, not in someone's home. Proctors must be uh, able to monitor their students at all times and actually do so. Um, we don't have to worry about exam passwords because uh, my exams are pencil and paper. Uh, proctors must be able to uh, verify your identification for the students. Um, proctors need to be able to read uh, instructions, so they need to have good uh, grasp of the English language. And they also need to be able to um, scan an email or at the very least uh, pop the uh, final exam into a, in an envelope and mail it to me, okay? Now, regarding what's acceptable as far as the location, uh, these are the locations right here versus unacceptable uh, sites right here, which basically is going to be someone's home. That's not acceptable, but these ones are right here. Uh, as far as people who are okay for proctoring, any of these folks down here uh, versus none of these people who are uh, uh, moms, dads, siblings, recruiters, or anyone who has a direct interest in making sure that you pass a class or something, okay? So, uh, second page right here, um, <coughs> you as a student will fill in this information right here and then hand it to your proctor or proctoring site. They'll fill out this information. Um, all this stuff right down here, location, the proctor will sign and date, and they can scan an email toward me, uh, to me, and um, or they can fax it. Here's my fax number. When, if they scan an email, it they can uh, scan to this or uh, send it to this email address, Cr McClure. That's my email address. Or if they could only do snail mail, then they could uh, e uh, they can mail it to this address right there. That's my physical address at the DMAC campus. Okay. So let me know if you have any questions about proctoring. You need to get started on proctoring as soon as possible. You need to email me to let me know where are you going to take your exams at. So what DMAC campus, if you live within 50 miles of any of the DMAC campuses, if you have to use proctoring because you live far away from DMAC campuses, then you need to find a proctoring person and or site and get this uh, exam, uh, excuse me, this proctor form filled out and to get sent to me as soon as possible well before the start of the midterm exams, okay? Now, regarding the midterm exam, I expect that during the week of June 22nd, which is, I think, let me check my uh, calendar here, June 22nd is a Monday. So it's a little less than a month from now. That's when we're going to actually have our first exam during this week. So, so the time frame is going to be between Monday morning and Friday afternoon uh, of this week right here. The 22nd through the 26th. Uh, so you can put that in your calendar. I'll give you a whole week to get in, arrange a date and time for you to take your exam with the proctor. And same thing with the final exam. Um, you'll take your final exam during the week of July 20th. 
you i mean on the books you really need to have your exam taken by the 22nd of july uh if you can't make that for one reason or another let me know and we'll i'll probably give you a, a, a day or two afterwards that you need to get that exam done by for each of these exams you're allowed to use notes now for your first exam i'm allowing you to use a three by five note card both sides in your own handwriting. It'll be a two hour exam. Uh, you'll uh, have uh, some formulas attached to it. Now, folks, don't get too worried about this. I will uh, send out a practice exam followed by solutions. So you'll know exactly what to expect for the midterm exam. Same thing with final exam, except for notes, you'll be allowed uh, either to use your 3 by 5 note card from the first exam together with one from uh, the second half of the material, or you can use one 8.5 by 11 sheet of notes, both sides, in your own handwriting, one or the other. Again, I wouldn't worry too much about notes unless you really want to because the formulas that I provide you are fairly uh, comprehensive. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Okay, or let me know if you have any questions about proctoring, but uh, I'll reiterate, you really need to be diligent about determining your testing site, and let me know as soon as possible, or getting those proctor forms to me. Uh, waiting until just before midterm exam is just unacceptable, because that means that I have to do a lot of jumping through hoops to try to get you your exam. So in order for me to do what I need to do for you, you need to help me out as well. All right. Now, um, classroom conduct, this uh, goes without saying, is to, you know, uh, be a diligent student. This is just comes right out of the suggested uh, syllabus that's given to us as instructors. So I'll let you look at that. Missed exam, look, I, I'll, I'll just let you know right now, if you cannot take your exam within the time period provided, you need to let me know as soon as possible. Um, simply forgetting out about an exam and then contacting me weeks later to see what you could do. Unless you have a valid reason, uh, the answer is going to be no. Okay. Now, I'll show you here in a few minutes regarding homework. Uh, chapters 1 through 4, homework, will have a due date of June 22nd. So it's going to be self-paced, provided that you get everything done by June 22nd. But the caveat here is that if you don't get homework done by the due date, you, uh, as in for chapters 1 through 4 homework done by the 22nd of June, you can still work on those problems after words, but there's going to be a 50% penalty for any of the homework problems that were not done by the due date, okay? Now, any homework for the material after Chapter 4 is all going to be due on July 22nd. And there will not be any homework that you could do after July 22nd, so please don't ask. All right, study expectations. I'll let you read that on yourself, uh, on your own, I mean. Whether a policy that comes right from the catalog, class cancellation procedure, don't worry about that because it's an online course. Um, now, regarding academic dishonesty, where that really, excuse me, Sorry about that. Where that really comes into play, there is in two ways. Uh, number one, sorry about that. Uh, number one is uh, homework, online homework. Getting somebody else to do your online homework for you uh, is not good, all right? Because you're just shooting, you're, you're just... Uh, shooting yourself in the foot you're cheating yourself and you're not going to be uh well prepared for the exams and you're not going to be learning the material 
Now, you could have people help you, but at the end of the day, it needs to be you who learns and understands the material. Uh, the other way that this comes into play for academic dishonesty is if you were to have somebody take uh, any of the exams for you. Now, that's why we have proctoring. Now, there's still a little bit of a trust issue that we have because um, I, you know, the proctors that I've seen in the past, I haven't met these people. If I'm not sure, I talk with them on the phone or exchange emails with them. All right, but if I find out that you're uh, misrepresenting, you know, somebody else taking your exam for you at, with the proctor, then that's not going to be good either. Uh, and if I find out, I'll just have to re refer you to the um, DMAC Judicial Office for them to investigate, okay? Uh, but if you uh, want to know what the academic misconduct policy is, then you can go down to this link right here, okay? Um, now, July 1st is the last day to drop this course without an F appearing on your transcript but if you're um, incur, uh, incurring some sort of a uh, difficulty you know maybe there's a sickness or uh, you're taking care of a, a sick child or you uh, get into an accident that takes you out of your studies for several weeks uh, let me know we'll talk about maybe doing an incomplete instead We'll have to take that on as a one-on-one -on -one sort of uh, issue, uh, but be prepared also to have someone provide me with some documentation as well, okay? Uh, if you have a disability that requires some sort of accommodation, and uh, for this course, that might come into play where if you need time and a half or double time testing, uh, let me know or call this number right here or email Ms. Argo. Uh, and they could help you out with getting the documentation that you need. But in order for me for me to grant you uh, any sort of accommodation, I need to have documentation that you can uh, email to me. So let me know, okay? Um, uh, and the rest of the stuff is pretty uh, much a boilerplate to information for you to review on your own. Uh, down here on the very last page are instructions that... Um, are provided to you regarding enrolling in my stat lab which is the online homework slash quiz sort of uh, software I'll let you read this on your own I see there's about um, two-fifths of the course that's already done this so I don't think it's that difficult let's go ahead and go to my stat lab okay so here's what you do I'm going to go ahead and sign out here. And so here's here here's the website here or you could just type in uh this web address right here pearsonbiolabandmastering.com okay. Now to get registered, you're just going to click right in here. The student uh, you need to have your email, preferably your DMAC email handy, course ID, your course ID. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, sorry, your course ID is this one right here. McClure 40941. And then you'll uh, need to get an access code that came shrink wrapped with the textbook that you bought from our bookstore. Or if you bought a used book that did not come with the, an access code. Or if um, you just want to use the e text, then you'll need to have a credit card or debit card handy or a PayPal account. Now you click on register OK now. Uh, it'll ask you. What the course ID is here. So you'll just go ahead and type it in. 
continue. Now, if you've ever used Pearson uh, before, then it'll ask you your username and password. And if you got if you forgot either one of those, just you click on this link to recover either your username or password. If you've never used Pearson before and you want to create, you, while well, you need to create a Pearson account, then click on this button right here. And it's pretty straightforward stuff. You probably have done this many times with other uh, websites. Don't forget to click on this button right here. And then you click on create account. And then the next page after this, you'll uh, input uh, either your access code number, excuse me, your access code, or you'll input some payment information if you don't have an access code. All right. I'm going to go back and go ahead and oops, log in here. All right. So once you get registered with uh, my lab and you uh, are enrolled in the course, then you um, get back into the course by clicking on this link. Again, type in your email address, which is used as your username and your password. One, two, three. And I'll let you look at uh, what you something similar what you'll see now of course I've taught this many times and I've you know have all these other courses you you might have one course which is our course together with uh, any other Pearson courses that you're taking as well so go ahead and click on the link for uh, Matt 157 section WW7 statistics summer 2015 oh by the way as a as a caveat here if you do not yet have uh, your uh, school money, your, meaning your student loan or financial aid, um, you'll see a link when you do your registration slash enrollment um, when it's time for you to input your access code or your payment information. There will be a link to, uh, for uh, temporary access. And I think that you get like two weeks. Okay? You'll get two weeks to... Uh, have access to this course before it locks you out and if you do need just a few more days before your uh, financial aid hits just let me know and I'll put you in contact with the local uh, uh, Pearson representatives all right so here's uh, my stat lab uh, it's not very exciting here you can see what the book is that uh, this course is based on here just click on this link for homework Okay, now I've got all the homework figured out for the entire course. You can see the due dates. Actually, you see all this homework that's due on June 21st, not the 22nd, but the 21st, at midnight. All the way through Chapter 4. And any homework that you do after chapter four homework that's going to be due on july 22nd again all this homework is going to be due at midnight so it behooves you to do a little bit every day now there are some quizzes as well at the end of each uh chapter there is a review quiz so make sure that after you do the homework starting with orientation after you do the homework for a um, for a, a chapter chapters um, homework 1.2 1.3 1.4 when you once you get done with section 1.4 then before you do the review homework you'll need to take the quiz now you see this little green flag here this is going to tell you, you need to do the review quiz before doing the review homework. So you go up here to quizzes and tests, and then you click on the link for the review quiz. You take the review quiz. You'll have one attempt. So you, you, you and you need to do this one setting, 90 minutes. Now, you probably won't be pressed for time if you're well prepared.
you have something like 20 questions. Now, based on the results of your quiz, well, that will determine how many questions that you get from the uh, review homework. If you ace uh, the review quiz, then you should have little to no review homework. But uh, there is a whole bunch of uh, problems that are available for you to work on. Uh, and they're keyed on the specific objectives in each of, um, or in, in the quiz. So if you miss uh, a question for a particular objective in the quiz, then the system is going to give you one or more problems for you to do in the review homework. So make sure that you are well prepared when doing your quiz if you don't want to do a lot of uh, problems in your review homework, okay? But you will receive automatic credit for your the problems in your review homework based on the result of your quiz, okay? All right. So I showed you the homework and the quizzes. Don't worry too much about the study plan unless you want to do uh, additional problems. All right, so you can work your way through these. Each uh, objective in each of the sections that you uh, are going to be working your way through, there's um, some practice problems and then quiz me. I don't make study plans specifically part of the grade, but if you are interested in additional help, additional work, uh, in addition to your grade and homework, then by all means get in here into the study plan, click on the practice and then the quiz means for each of the object objectives for each of the sections uh, in, um, uh, for each of the chapters that we're doing, okay? Now, uh, in the grade book, when you click on this link, you'll see the results of everything that you have done already through the semester, okay? Stat Crunch is going to be an online um, statistical platform that you could use. And if anyone wants me to show them how to use it as the semester goes on, please don't be bashful about having me show you. I'll be happy to record a lecture or two or three. And I might even... Um, um, link some uh, past videos that I've recorded uh, showing students how to use their graphing calculators and stack crunch. Okay, just let me know if you want me to show you that. Now, uh, chapter contents, when you click on this link right here, <coughs> you'll have access to the student solution manual, which are solutions to the uh, odd numbered problems from the textbook, uh, home, uh, homework problems. But, you know, don't use this to try to do your homework with, all right? Because they're good. They're, it, it's not going to work, okay? Just let you know now. If you want to read the e-text, then just click on any of these uh, uh, links here. So if you want to read the material section 1.2, then click on that link. Um, now, you want to watch videos. Look, I'm not going to record videos for all the material in the course. So you might want to um, queue up a video, sit there and watch it. That'll be your lecture. And hey, they're not too bad. So by all means, go ahead and watch your videos. Read the textbook. Hi. I'm Marty Triola. See, there's Dr. Triola right there. The I've met the guy. He's pretty good. Statistical thinking. Now, because this okay. is the very first so topic he, he, in the book. So go ahead and know, just take a uh, watch the videos. The emphasis on critical thinking, the fact that it's not an algebraic manipulation. And there, there is, is one or more books. video for each section in the textbook. So... That's how you get to videos. And then regarding the textbook. Let's go ahead and pull that up. <coughs> Excuse me. 
you need to make sure that you have good uh, internet connection. Uh, a lot of students like to do uh, studying at night, but that oftentimes is going to be when the internet's slowest. So anyway, folks, this is the same material that you see in your textbook. The big difference is, is that this is going to have um, some multimedia embedded right into the product here. So you could uh, read through the textbook this way if you are um, a, a digital person. Um, when I told you that there was multimedia embedded in it, um, this is an example where, look, they give you an example, you read through it, try to understand what they're telling you, then you can click on this link where it's going to give you a similar sort of example and, and you respond to it and check your learning, okay? And there you go. It's not graded, by the way. <laughs> okay, so you you see where you can access the video as well as the electronic textbook. Uh, they have that for all of the chapters that we're going to be doing, which, uh, by the way, is all the way out to chapter 13. Uh, Appendix A, let's go and take a look at that. I'm using my uh, cell phone right now as a mobile hotspot because the internet is really poor right now in my house. Uh, <laughs> so I, I know that the connection speed isn't very good right now. Uh, table A, excuse me, um, uh, Appendix A contains several tables. Uh, so make sure that uh, you uh, know where to get them. By the way, you can blow any of these up by using these buttons right here. If you want to highlight anything, you can use this button right here. I was told that you could um, make annotations, but I haven't figured that out how to do that. Maybe you can... Hmm. Well, you could do highlighting. I don't know about anything else. Okay, so anyway, but uh, Appendix A has all these various tables. Uh, you're going to want to become very familiar with these tables. I will also provide these tables to you when you do your exams. Okay, so that's Appendix A, uh, which are going to be your, your uh, tables. Uh, Appendix B is going to have your data sets. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Mm, patience. Sorry, it's taken so long. Yeah, so like I said, Appendix B has a um, bunch of different data sets here, which may be of some interest to you when you're working through some examples. By the way, um, when you click on this link, the entire data set here will be uh, uploaded into StatCrunch uh, for what you can do your statistical analysis okay so um, anyway so I I showed you how to do your uh, homework don't forget to um, do your orientation and um, so there you go there's your my stat lab um, let me also now show you um, blackboard not very exciting. I'll show you how to get to it right now. So you go to the DMAC website, www.dmac.edu.
So there's our website there. You just get to it by just typing in www.dmac.edu. And so there's our homepage for the college. You could check your web mail by clicking on this link right here and signing in. Otherwise, you click on this link to get access to Blackboard. And then you click on this link where it says access online courses. And then, hold on here. It should have logged me out, but uh, it'll take you to a page that looks like this. You just type in your username and password and click on log in. And then look uh, for the course, which is going to be this one right here. For uh, statistics, uh, it's not very exciting here. I, I make the occasional announcement here. Uh, I made this announcement on May 21st, right here. I'll uh, do an announcement when the midterm exam date is approaching, and I'll make another announcement when the final exam date's posting. And if there's any other uh, relevant information that is uh, um, necessary to put out for the entire course, to the entire class. I, I will make that announcement here. Uh, it, it'll appear right here on the front part of the Blackboard uh, course. And also uh, an email will be generated to your DMAC email. Uh, syllabus here. Uh, an electronic version of the course syllabus is located right there. Posted some information uh, from uh, regarding my office location at the Ankeny DMAC campus, my office telephone number, my DMAC email address, and there's a copy or a photo of me. I just ran a 5K for DMAC just a month ago. And then, of course, there's the link for uh, course content. Um, there's really not much here. Uh, I just created these blank folders for now, but as the semester goes on, I'll be putting stuff um, in these folders. I like to make practice exams. Uh, and when the uh, uh, midterm exam comes up, uh, about a week before, I'll put in a past uh, exam that you can look at followed by solutions. I usually will put out a blank practice exam so you'll have the chance to work through it and separately I'll post the solutions so you can check your attempt. Excuse me. Um, I'll be posting recorded videos including this one uh, the links uh, right in this uh, folder right here. Uh, proctor form, which I've showed you already. Uh, here's a copy of it right there. So in case you need it. Sorry. And then tables and uh, formulas. Uh, this Whenever it pulls up here is what you'll see that I provide to you with your exams. Bunch of formulas and tables and um, everything that you will need to help you as you take your exam. Okay, This will be attached to your midterm exam and your final exam. Okay, But you're also welcome to use this as you do your homework as well. Okay. Okay, folks, so that's just about it. Um, if you have any questions about anything, uh, please don't hesitate to email me at crmcclure at, at uh, dmac.edu, or you can call my uh, phone number, office phone number, right there. Now, I'll tell you right... Uh, this week, 
uh, for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, May 27th through the 29th, I'm going to be out of town. Um, so if you call my office phone number, you can leave a voicemail, um, but you won't be able to get a return call back from me until the next week, okay? Just letting you know. So your best bet is just to send me an email, which I monitor using my smartphone, so whenever I would get the chance, I would be able to contact you and let uh, provide a response to you. Okay. Uh, so with that, are there any questions? Well, let me know, and I'll do the best that I can to get in touch with you. But I encourage you to go ahead and get started getting enrolled in the online homework, watching those videos, reading the textbook, and doing the homework do at least one homework assignment every day you when you look at the homework due dates there's one assignment due every day starting around like june 5th or so june 5th june 6th one assignment due every day starting with the orientation homework so please stay on top of that okay so with that i uh bid you adieu and uh, take care. Good luck. And again, let me know if you have any questions about anything and I'll get back to you. Okay. Goodbye.